Hello, hey, what's up? Today, I am gonna show you how to make beaded daisy chains or beaded daisy chain chokers. I don't know, I could make it into a bracelet or a choker, um, but I think I'll probably start with a choker and see how that looks. Um, I haven't made too many of these. I've just kind of seen them on my Pinterest lately. Like they're kind of trendy, I keep seeing it pop up and they look super easy to make. They don't require that crazy specific materials. You could use different materials and they're, they don't really require that much patience and intricacy. So I think it's a good one for beginners and it's super cute. I really like these. And before I dive in though, I just wanna say thank you so much to the people who subscribed to my channel and left me comments. Uh, that was so wonderful of you. You guys are the best. You know, please feel free to keep writing comments. Tell me what your experience was with something or ask questions. It's great. Okay, enough chit chat. For this project, you're gonna need some beading thread, a beading needle, beads, of course. I'm using sunflower colors for this first one, and in some kind of closure mechanism. I'm gonna use this spring ring clasp, a few different sizes of jump rings, and you'll need some pliers too to open and close them. So, for the thread, I wanted something a little stronger and stiffer. I don't wanna use something too slippery like Nemo thread, so I'm gonna use Fireline today. Um, again, if you're using bigger beads, you could use like thicker thread. You'll sort of see later when I start making it, um, but I'll just show you for now what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use Fireline. I think it would make sense if you used Wildfire bonded thread as well. For the needle, I am gonna use my big eye needles that I recently bought. Uh, this is Beetle on brand. I'll put all the brands in the description. I think I called these fish eye needles in a previous video, but they're called big eye needles. My bad. For the beads, who's surprised? I'm gonna use my favorite brand of beads, Toho size 11. Um, and these are really nice and very even. I wouldn't recommend using some very sharp Delica beads because this is a bit more like round flowery shape you know I don't feel like having those sharp corners would make sense for these cute little beaded flowers I feel like this project would also be great for if you had more cheap uneven beads or maybe some check beads that are a little more like elongated does that make sense <laughs> that might look funny in other projects because really this is just like stringing some beads and then a few passes with a needle to make a little circle flower you'll see for the clasp, of course, there are a million different ways that you could finish a necklace and do a clasp. I'll just show you one way that worked really well for me. I'm using a round spring ring clasp, and then you're gonna want something to attach it to. I'm gonna use a jump ring that's kind of the same size as that spring ring, and then I'll use two smaller jump rings to attach it to the beadwork. You could also use a chain extender so that you could have a little more length options in your choker if you like. I don't know the sizes of my jump rings off the top of my head, so I'll just look them up later and put them in the description. So I pulled out about four feet of thread for this project, um, and I was just guessing, I think it ended up being a bit too long. Um, and then I threaded my needle and then the first thing we want to do is put on a stopper bead which you can use any bead that's a different color or shape than the rest of your beadwork it's just gonna be there to stop your beads from falling off so just thread your needle put the stopper bead on and slide it down to the end but not too far you want to leave a pretty long tail behind um, I left maybe eight inches of tail I want plenty of tail then I just brought my needle back through that stopper bead uh, from the other side. So you just make a little loop around it and I'm doing that again just to keep it secure. And you don't want to tie an actual knot around this because you're going to need to undo that later. And this you'll be able to undo. Now to start the actual beading itself, I'm going to pick up five white beads. These are going to be the beads in between the flowers. They're going to sort of space it out. I chose the color white. These will not be turned into flowers. And I'm just sliding them down all the way to that stopper bead. It's kind of like the stem. It'll be in between the flowers, I guess. Next, you will pick up the beads you will use to make the flower and you'll pick up four of them first. I'm using yellow for the flower petals. So I'll pick up four yellow beads and I'll slide them back. And then you're gonna pick up one bead that will be the center of your flower. And I'll use brown because mine is gonna be kind of like a sunflower. And now you're going to look at those petal beads, look at that very first one you strung on farthest from you and bring your needle through that bead. 
just like this. They're sort of going away from where your thread just was. And pull it through and they kind of form a little loop. And I'm just sort of rotating it in my hand a little bit. I like to have that center bead sort of closer to me. And then to finish the rest of the flower, you're gonna pick up the remaining two petal beads. So I'll pick up two more yellow beads right here. And to put these on, I will now look at the bead that is opposite the center from me. So it's a petal bead and I'm going right through it. It's opposite that brown bead from where I just was. And I pull it through and hey, there it is. That's our first flower. All the little petal beads are neatly arranged in a little circle around the brown bead. Um, and it doesn't have to be all like perfect and neat. It's just, you know, they're kind of around it. There's no particular exact precise way it's supposed to be sitting, but you know, you look far away and it looks like a flower. Super cute. So with flower number one done, I will just sort of do the next one now. Again, we're picking up five spacer beads and I chose five because I liked having that distance apart. You could do two, you could do seven, Tr play around with it. Try different ways of spacing out your flowers. Then I'm picking up four of my petal beads, four yellow beads. I'm also just putting them all on my needle right away. I didn't slide them back this time. Doesn't make a difference. And I picked up my one center bead for the center of the flower. Now I'm sliding them back. And to make the flower, I will go to that first petal bead I strung on, petal bead furthest away from me, and bring my needle through it, coming from my direction. Pull it through, let it form into a little loop. And now that's half the flower, or I guess two thirds of the flower. <laughs> and I will pick up the last two petal beads to finish the flower. And I will bring my needle through the petal that is opposite the center from me. And I pull it tight and here it is. I made the second flower. It's so quick and easy, I love making these. I was able to do this totally in real time. It didn't speed anything up. So you could see uh, each flower was really quick to make. All right, so now I am just going to zoom a little bit. I'm gonna speed up and let you see me making a few more flowers and then we'll get to making the clasp itself eventually. So now I have finished the length I want and I'll show you how to end it. I'm ending on my five white beads and to tuck in the string, I'm going to skip the last bead and bring my needle through the rest of the white beads first. I had some trouble deciding if I wanted to go through the flower, but I'll just start by going through those white beads. And I want to secure that last bead because that's gonna hold our clasp. So I'm gonna go around it again. And to do that, I'm gonna take advantage of the flower being a circle. I'm bringing my needle through all of the yellow petals in a circle so that I can, I'm basically just turning around so that I can double up the thread, make everything really tight and secure. So here I go around the flower. And I'm going back through that stem. And I'll go through that last bead so now it has a double layer and go back through. Now to actually tie it off, I decided to do it on the other side of the flower. So I'm going halfway around the flower now. And I'm just going to go through that one stem bead and I'll tie a knot here. So I'm just sort of bringing my needle through just around the other side of the thread that's already there, just to help me make a knot. I'll make my knot nice and tight. I'll bring my needle through a few more beads so that I can cut it. Now 
There, now that end is all tied off and nice, and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. The other side, remember, had our stopper bead on it, and we wanna take that off. So remember, this is why we didn't want to tie a knot on it. I'm just sort of like pulling it out, um, pulling out the loops that were there, nothing really tight. And this is also why I left a nice long tail for us because I'm threading it on my needle because I need to have enough length to be able to tie the knots, tie the needle back in, tie the thread back in. All right, so I'm skipping that last bead. Maybe you couldn't see it, but there it is. That's the fifth bead there. I skipped it and went through the rest of the beads. And I'm going around the flower in a circle. This is just so that I can secure the thread, double up everything. It'll be nice and strong and it won't fall apart. And I'm going through that last bead again and then the rest of them. Now halfway around the flower, and I'm tying a little knot right after that first stem bead. This is just where I decided to tie the knot. If you wanna be even more secure, go higher up the chain. I feel like that would also be a good idea. You never really want your work to fall apart, but these didn't fall apart for a while after I used them when they were done. So I think this method of securing them is pretty good. But then again, I do a pretty strong thread and now both ends are pretty nice. Now we just need to attach a clasp to them. Here's the whole thing. All right, so I'll start with my small jump rings. Those are each gonna go on the ends. I'm pulling it open sideways with my pliers and I'm just gonna fit that bead, that last bead, that's why it's angled the other way. I'm gonna fit that over the jump ring and I'll put the clasp on it. You could use a different kind of clasp, like a lobster clasp, whatever you like. And I close my jump ring and that end is done. And the other side, I didn't get a very good camera focus on that, but again, this other small jump ring, I'm just doing the same, opening it, putting it over the last bead on the other side, and I'm putting my big jump ring. If you were using a chain extender, this is where you would put it instead of that big jump ring. I'm just using the big jump ring because I know the exact length. Um, I sort of measured this out already to see that it would fit my neck, so I know the length is right, and I'm just gonna use the big jump ring and I can hook that spring ring onto it, and it is a nice finished choker. I think this closure method is pretty neat looking. Um, I came up with it, and there are plenty of other ways you could do a closure, I'm sure. Um, so if you have a method that is better for closing chokers like this, um, please feel free to let me know. I like learning new things, and I hope my method um, was useful to some people. Oh my gosh, the whole thing looks super cute to me. I love that. So that was super quick. That only took me about 10-ish minutes to make, making it definitely faster than the earrings I've made recently, the uh, fringe earrings. This was really quick. It's a good, easy project to do. Let me see if I like it. Oh, that is so cute. I really like that. Oh, these are adorable. I was wondering if it would be a little too like little kid-ish, but it's not. I love that. I want to make more. So yeah, since I've told you how to make the basic stitch of how to do that flower, I'm just going to make a few more things. I'm going to make some bracelets as well as more chokers, and I'm just going to try different colors and see what works, what I can make more fun and different about this. Let's see what I can come up with. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna make a bracelet and I picked out some <laughs> cute pink and purple colors, which is great because I think I just said I didn't wanna to be too much like a little kid, but you know what, maybe I secretly do. Maybe I secretly wanna be five years old and obsessed with pink and purple again. 
So I'm just speeding this process up. You already saw how to do the actual stitch and now I'm just having some fun making ones with different colors. Um, and I'm at a further away angle because it's a lot easier for me to work like this. Um, that's the thing about making jewelry. To really show you what I'm doing, I have to have the camera right up in my work. With this one, I decided to do sort of an alternating flower thing where I have pink and purple flowers and the pink flowers have a purple center, the purple flowers have a pink center. Um, yeah, try out different patterns like this. I had a lot of fun with it. And I just sort of measured it over my wrist and made it fit the same way. And then I tried out this blue one because I like the idea of trying a light colored flower with darker colored stems. Um, and it did look pretty cute, but I think I liked the pink and purple ones better. But it's also very cute and very bright. You can see my big ol' container of lots and lots of bead stuff. I have so many more like that. There's a lot of materials I should try out using. I also made that pink and white one that's right next to the yellow one. Um, I made that other choker off camera. The only difference is I did add six white beads in between the flowers instead of five, and that really didn't make a very big difference. Um, and so those are all of the finished ones that I finished up together. Two bracelets, two necklaces, and I had a lot of fun doing it. Yay, so I have a bunch of stuff I made. This pink one wasn't that innovative really, and I feel like it didn't make a huge difference putting the different um, number of beads in between. Maybe if you have like a whole bunch more in between, like, oh, like a big space, you'll see a difference. And you know, I didn't really want to change it up that much in the bracelets. I just liked this exact length. I liked the distance in between the flowers. And I like that I came up with this, you know, alternating flower colors thing. Um, that was fun. And you could do anything with the flowers. You could do every flower a different color. Do a flower and a rainbow for all I care. That'll be fun. Um, these are cute. I hope you guys liked this very adorable little simple bead flower tutorial. And I had fun doing it. And I will try to keep coming out with more videos. And you guys please keep giving me comments, giving me suggestions asking me questions, I'm happy with all of it. So if you would like to help out my channel, you could give it a like or a comment or a subscribe, or you could check out my Etsy where I have a few things that I sell. Um, so thank you for watching and bye-bye. Nobody wants to see that, honey.